I'd like for you to take your Bibles tonight, please, and turn to Colossians chapter 2. I'd like for it to take you into some of the accuracy of God's Word in this great second chapter of Colossians tonight, because I'm sure it will bless your heart abundantly. Verse 1. You see, the, 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 the word for ties together the previous chapter. They should technically not have put a chapter here, but they did, which is all right. But we want to go on with the word for. I would that ye knew what great conflict. The word conflict is desirous care that I, you know, a real heart concern I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and, as, and for as many as have not seen my faith in the flesh. Increasingly more and more, these words like this become more living and real to me. as They must have been dynamically real to the Apostle Paul, because all over the country and other foreign countries, there are many people that I've had the privilege of teaching the word to, and their lives have taken on a, a new type of tenor and a new manifestation of the greatness of the power of Christ in them. And yet I haven't seen them face to face. They haven't seen me. And yet day after day I lift these people in prayer. And I'm thankful to God for what God has done among those people. And I'm truly grateful for all of these things that have occurred. And I have a great care and a great concern. I just want people to hear God's word in our day and time and hour. I want them to have the blessing of the greatness of the inherent accuracy and the real relevancy of God's word in our time. The Apostle Paul had it in his day, and the word of God has not changed. Therefore, those of us who represent God here upon earth as ministers of his must have this great care and concern for God's people today. Verse 2 says, For this reason, that their hearts might be what? Comforted. Comforted. It's the same root word that is used when it talks about the manifestation, edification, exhortation, and comfort. Comfort is that quiet acquiescence, that inner serenity, that inner peace, that their hearts might be have a quiet serenity, an inner knowingness which is just at peace with God and with the individual himself. Being knit together, being knit together with all the other believers knit together in what? Love. You see, the agapeo, the love of God in the renewed mind and the manifestation is the body of the church, the believers. And that's how we're to be knit together unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, the full assurance of understanding, the full assurance is the total knowledgeable knowledge. Just fantastic. To the acknowledgement, to the knowledgeable knowledge, the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of whom? Christ. The acknowledgement of the mystery to be completely, totally knowledge knowledgeable of the mystery, that mystery of God which was hidden from before the foundations of the world with God and wasn't made manifest until it was given to the Apostle Paul, as the word says. That mystery which is God in Christ in you, the hope of glory, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and of the same body, that's the mystery. And we're to have a full assurance of understanding 
have a full assurance. God never meant us to just know it halfway. We are to know it fully, have a full assurance of that knowledge and be knowledgeably knowledgeable of the mystery. So this is the thing we ought to really know. We ought to know the things God really says we ought to know. It's as simple as that. The mystery of God and of Father and of Christ in whom? The Father and in Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and what? Then it isn't in the United Nations. Then it isn't in the national councils of churches or non-churches, right? Where is the knowledge and the wisdom? In God, in Christ, and you can never know God or Christ until you know his word. For the word of God is the will of God. You cannot know God's will till you know God's word. You can read every commentary, every newspaper, every periodical till you're blue in the face. You can study Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, and all the other intellectuals of time, but you'll never know God till you go back to his word. You'll only have man's opinion of what he thinks God is. And he, man's usually wrong. At least he's always belittling God. He never brings it up to where the word really sets it. Why not just go back and let the word speak and accept what the word says? That's all it's to it. It's as simple as that. In him are hid all the treasures. The treasures are in God of wisdom and of knowledge. They're in God. You know what James says? If anybody lack wisdom, let him go to Webster. Oh. <laughs> let him ask of whom? Who giveth liberally, you know, not sporadically, not hesitantly. It's in God. And God is spirit. You can't know spirit except going back to the revelation given in his word. In concretion. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. I just can't recall what that word beguile is at the moment. But it, 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 maybe you can look it up in the dictionary. But you know what beguile is. Somebody, any man should beguile you, trick you out, trip you out, you know, dog you the wrong way with it, and doing this with enticing words. And those words are always beautiful wrappings. They're flowery. They're everything else. You know, that's how they catch us. He says in verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, as he hasn't seen them in the flesh, and he's not with them in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit. This is how we pray. Remember, praying in the Spirit? That's the only way you can make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's what he was doing. And he said he was joying and beholding your order. The word order in essence means the way in which they were operating. It was kosher, it was above board, it was open. And the steadfastness, the faithfulness of your believing in Christ. The word faith there in the King James is the word pistis, which here must be translated believing. Because this word pistis is translated either, either faith or believing. And it, you can always tell by the context which one of the two it has to be. As ye have therefore received... Christ Jesus, the Lord, so what? Walk ye in it. We are living epistles, the word says, to be read. Very few people ever go to their Bibles first. They look at your life, they look at mine, and they read us. They read our actions, they read our walk. We are living epistles. 
And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, we have to walk like sons and daughters of God. We have to act like it. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Your Bible would fall to pieces as if it said Jesus Christ. It doesn't. It says Christ Jesus. Just amazed at the greatness of God's word. It's like never once does it say in the Bible when you're born again, you're in Jesus. It says when you're born again, you're in Christ. There's a lot of difference between being in Christ and being in Jesus. A lot of difference between eating soup and steak. So, a lot of difference. Now, it says, as ye therefore have received Christ Jesus. Now we do what? Walk. You don't sit on your spiritual laurels. 